Hey, I'm Crompwell, and today I'm going to show you how I would set up retopology using B surfaces inside of Blender. So as you can see, we're in version 2.79. So as long as you're using a reasonably updated version of Blender, uh, it should come pre-packaged with B surfaces. Some people were kind of worried about needing to download it. That's not the case. I believe since version 2.71 and beyond, um, it should come pre-packaged in Blender. I know for certain that in version 2.79 we have it. And let's take a look at where it's hidden. So let's go to File, User Preferences, and check our add-ons. So obviously we need to look for B surfaces. So let's type that in. And you can see here we have B surfaces GPL edition. Now some people were worried about this GPL edition, thinking that it was some special thing or that they needed to download something else. That's not the case. GPL basically just describes the license under which the add-on was supplied with Blender. Now Blender has some interesting, uh, interesting licensing requirements in order to package add-ons with Blender. And so I believe that this is just describing the license under which the add-on was included inside of Blender. If you're looking for the version, it's right here, version 1.51. And so make sure that that's up to date. But like I said, it comes prepackaged with Blender. So whatever one you have should be more than sufficient. Another thing we're going to take note of is our preferences here. It's going to be appended into the tab category of tools. We'll see that on the left side a little bit later. So make sure you tick that on and then hit save user settings if you want that to turn on each time you launch Blender. And we can close out of that. Now, before we begin retopologizing this crazy mesh, we need to do some setup. So I like to name this. So I'm just going to call this skull underscore ref so that we know that this is our reference mesh. And please note that this is a 3.1 million vert mesh. So it's got quite a bit of density to it. Now, if you're interested in just creating a retopology mesh and you find that millions of polygons are simply too dense to deal with inside of blender you can always come over here and add a decimate modifier in the interest of time i'm not going to sit here and make you wait for blender to decimate this mesh because it can take some time with very dense meshes i happen to know that this mesh will actually work without needing to decimate it but if you find that your system is lagging, uh, feel free to add a decimate modifier and apply it. Just make sure that you keep the original fully detailed model saved separately if you'd like to bake any information out at a later point. Now, this video that I'm doing here is not going to be going through the entire retopology or even baking process. I'm simply going to show you how I set up my retopology workflow if I'm not using any special add-ons just using what comes native inside of Blender in order to remesh this crazy dense model that I have here. So obviously we have the reference mesh. Now let's create the retopology mesh. So the easiest way to do that I find is to add a plane. Now this can be any object, but I like to stick with simple. So we'll stick with a plane, tab into edit mode, delete all your vertices, tab back out into object mode and rename this retopo and we have the beginnings of our retopology object. Now, before we try to use B surfaces, we need to do some setup in order to get it to work properly. So the first thing I like to do is under the modifier stack of our retopology object, add a simple shrink wrap and make sure that you have your target set to the reference mesh. Now it's gonna lag for about a second because it's so dense and there we go. That was painless. And I'm going to turn on keep above surface as well as the cage here so that we can see what the shrink wrap is actually doing to our mesh. The next thing I like to do is hop over here and find my display settings and turn on X-ray. This will basically allow us to see our retopology mesh from any direction. So if we look at it from underneath here, we should be able to see the retopology mesh through our reference object. It's pretty useful in the case uh, that your, your retopology mesh is clipping through the surface of your reference mesh. Another thing that I like to do to complement the shrink wrap is turn on snapping in the face. So make sure you set this to face mode with snapping and then make sure you turn on project individual elements using this button here. That way our vertices, edges and faces will move along the surface of our reference mesh. Just be careful that if you add in other objects that it will snap to those as well. So in this case, let's just keep our retopology mesh or retopology object because there's no mesh there yet. 
and our skull reference mesh to keep things from uh, getting too complicated. The last thing I like to do is a bit of a personal touch. So I'm going to add in a material for our retopology mesh. And instead of playing with the surface settings, I'm going to come down here and change the viewport color. And we'll use a nice orange here just so that way it doesn't blend in with the background. Other times I, I like to use a green or, or a blue, but in this case we'll use orange to give us some nice contrast. And there we go, that should be fine. We can close that up now. So before we create our mesh, we need to dial in some grease pencil settings. Now I know this is a lot of setup, um, but it's worth it, especially if you don't want to pay for a retopology add-on. There are some really good ones out there that I do recommend uh, purchasing because it takes a lot of this process away. And there are also some nice added benefits such as using a mirror and a grid and all this, which of course you can still do that stuff here, but I find that using an add-on can really speed things up. So to set up Grease Pencil, let's hit the N key to open up this side menu here and find Grease Pencil la Layers. Make sure that you're still on your retopology object, tick that on if it's not, and then here's a really important step that a lot of other tutorials seem to neglect. Switch it from scene to object. A lot of people just kind of gloss that over and assume that it's immediately set to object. Um, when I tried to do this the first time, I was like, why isn't it working? If you have it set to scene, um, B services will complain that there are no strokes associated with the retopology object. So make sure you switch it to object. And then hit new and then rename this if you want or leave it default. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure that you have a layer associated with this object here. And you can see that we have the grease pencil icon appearing next to our retopology object. We can close that out and open up our tool settings. And here are the last settings before we can actually get into remeshing this object. Find grease pencil. And you can see here that we can activate grease pencil with this option. I believe the Hot key by default is the D key. Now I have a custom setup for that, so I'll be using separate keys for that. For you, you can either click this button or hit D when we're ready to draw. I like to leave continuous drawing on. I think by default this is set off, so whatever you're comfortable with, make sure that you change this. Uh, make sure data source is set to object. This will switch as you switch it in the end menu as well, so make sure it's on object. So you get a second chance there to make sure that you have the right setting. And then for stroke placement, make sure that you're using surface instead of cursor. And essentially what this does is it allows us to draw our grease pencil strokes on the surface of objects instead of at the depth of the cursor. So now that we have all of those settings done, let's hit the T key and we're ready to start drawing our guides. So I'm going to activate my grease pencil. You can see there it's changed to a brush. And let's start by drawing some strokes here. Now, bear in mind that the grease pencil strokes are actually based on a camera projection. So you can see here it is projecting onto the surface of the object, um, but be careful that if you are in a, in a different sort of orientation or your camera's not aligned properly, you might get this projecting in a weird way that you're not anticipating. So just be careful about that. All right, that looks good. Now, there is something I'm going to make note of after this. Now I'm just going to show you that this does actually work, but we need to pay attention to the stroke order. If you go back and add a stroke in between any one of these after you've finished this entire section here, um, it's going to create problems and I'll show you that in a minute. But first let's hit escape to exit our grease pencil and then we're going to hit the T key and come back up to the tools panel and whoa, there's no B surfaces here. Don't worry, just hit tab and go into edit mode. And before you know it, there it is. So we're going to turn off automatic join and hit add surface. It'll take a minute to calculate because it is a rather dense mesh. And there you go. We have our retopology mesh. It's looking good. It's got the same material settings that we've set here. And now we can either manually manipulate it. We can add in some additional geometry here. And because we have shrink wrap as well as snapping set on, we can also change the position of the rest of these vertices and it still snaps to the surface of our mesh, which is fantastic. I'm just gonna smooth shade that and show you with the X-ray on, we can see through the surface of the object. It's pretty useful. Again, if you wanna turn that off, just come back over here and turn off X-ray. You can see that I like to have it on because it shows through the surface of the reference mesh. But if you're looking at the bottom, sometimes it can be useful to toggle that off just so you're not seeing it through the bottom. All right, so let me show you that unique problem that I described earlier. So 
in object mode on our retopology mesh, I'm going to reactivate grease pencil and I'm just gonna draw more guidelines here like this. And say I wanted another line here. If I come back here and draw that and then I tab out or exit out and then tab out into object or edit mode, I'm sorry, and then hit add surface, watch what happens. It creates a, a pretty annoying problem here. You can see that this this row of vertices that came in is out of order because B surfaces pays attention to the order in which we create strokes. So make sure that if that happens, you can either grab that row of vertices and just move it out of the way or um, simply delete it and then come back out and redraw the next set and then bridge them or do whatever you need to. Just pay attention to the fact that um, B surfaces does pay attention to stroke order. And then we can take this and we can bridge these over here. There we go. So there we go. That is the beginnings of how I would set up a retopology workflow if I wasn't using any special add-ons. So it's completely free. It comes with Blender, and so you don't have to worry about any external things or paying for it. It's a pretty useful workflow, pretty easy to do. And then of course you can always come in here and do things like manually extrude things in order to connect them. So let's connect these. And of course it takes some time to retopologize everything properly. And you also need to be careful about where meshes uh, intersect. So for example, if I move this over here, it's going to project onto that horn. So just be aware of that. But for the most part, this is a pretty quick and easy way to set up your retopology workflow if that's what you're looking to do. Again, using B surfaces inside of Blender. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Also, feel free to connect with me on social media. Hit the subscribe button. If you want to do me a favor, hit the like button. I'll be posting more content soon. It just takes me a while to get some out because I've got a lot of projects going on at the same time. Um, but I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I hope it was useful to you, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.